On this episode of the Roundtable Podcast, we have an epic guest, right, Danny? Super juicy, and we find out what her favorite arm exercise is. Ooh. That's right. This is an amazing podcast overall. Just Morgan Wade. Awesome. <laughs> right. We got a rock star on today, so you got to tune in for this one. We have a legit fucking rock star. Let's go to the show. <laughs> Roundtable Podcast, I'm your boy, Corey G, in, yeah. at Small Arms. Danny at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We have special guests in the house, our friend, country music, straight rock star, Morgan Way. <laughs> What's good? Is it is it weird? I know you. I know. I know. I'm gonna pump our chest for a second. I know you've listened to us before, so that makes us feel good. Yeah, I listen to you in the morning. Yay, Danny! What do you think about that? I mean, it's pretty cool. I, yeah. mean, I didn't even think <laughs> I was gonna be on a fucking podcast. So. Well, I, we I think we need to preface that all of us just got done hitting maybe one of the juiciest Saturday workouts yes. ever in my life. Facts. Ten press. Like my, yeah. My arms are blowing up right now. You look you know? huge, bro. Yeah, I'm feeling yoked. The shoe sack shrug, shout out. Don't yeah. call myself. 69 but reps. 69 <laughs> reps, 69 second isometric. <laughs> might be one of the best shrug exercises of all time, but I'm feeling yoked. So good. Yeah. Morgan, what's it feel like to walk in old school gym? I know you like I know you like the realness. Yeah, no, I like the the I like don't want to say old school feel, but you know, <laughs> pun intended. Yeah. Yeah. So. Probably feels good, especially when you're on the road. You're well now. You've got your trailer with a squat rack in it, right. which is epic. I'm pretty sure my bus driver was like, "What the hell?" Because he was still <laughs> driving this morning, and I was like, "All right, I'm getting out right here," and I just go get in a Rolls Royce, and he's like, "This dude's from Mississippi," and he's just sitting there like looking at me like, <laughs> "What's happening?" He yeah. yeah. The other day, I was like in there, I was doing pull ups, and he like walked by. And then he was gone for like an hour and he came back and I was still in there and he just like, he just kind of like looked at me and shook his head. So I was good. like, he was like, yeah, he was like, I, I haven't had anybody. I haven't driven anybody that's done like, like this kind of thing back there. I was like, so to give you context, she's got a trailer on the, on the back of the tour bus that has a rogue squat rack with a, with a pull-up bar. And then she got a cable thing delivered here. So yeah. now she'll be able to do everything. But it's like, she literally is traveling with like a hardcore gym on the back of the tour bus. This is so yeah. awesome. That, like, it's amazing. Like, it's so awesome. Yeah, like, well, like, all I keep thinking about is The Rock when he was a, yeah. his. Uh, oh, yeah. He would have his own. Yeah. yeah his Same his situation, own, yeah. basically. It's on wheels. Well, because when you're. And I remember when I used to travel back in the day, it's like you can. The workouts just are so inconsistent and yeah. not very good. And when even if you have basics, but it's your environment. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was just stressing, you know, last tour, like trying to find somewhere. And then when I did the dumbbell shred stuff. You know, it was easier yeah. because I could do that at hotel gym or whatever. But then you like barbells. I though. do. So then I started doing all that. I was like, <laughs> I mean, it was like sometimes you'd have to just hit up a Planet Fitness and just try to. And I'm like, wah, this shit wah. sucks. <laughs> yeah. wah, wah. It's like, man, that's all. You know, yeah. it was like some of that stuff. And then, you know, I'll stay at some of the nicer hotels that have like the the you know all that stuff, but they don't open till like 8 a.m., which I don't get. Yeah, it's yeah. Weak. It's yeah. weak sauce 101. <laughs> Talk about the morning stuff. Is that something uh, I know that since we've known each other, like it seems like you've been doing a bit. Have you always been into the morning type stuff or did you kind of double down on it when you got way busier? Yeah, I uh, so my first job was at a gym mm. in uh, when I was in college okay. um, and I had to open the gym by myself. It was like an express gym, but I had to be up and in there by 430 and uh i lived about an hour away mm. so i was getting up you know three in the morning heading down there and i did that for five years you know while i was in college wow so then when i you know quit that job i wasn't getting up as early mm. obviously because i was like eh. yeah you know, i was like all right i've been doing this for five years but then um like right before reckless came out when i was in the studio recording that just going through a hard time so i just started getting up super early and uh, going on to the gym and, like, getting that That's in. Awesome. And so then I've just, like, stuck with that. It's a little different, obviously, on the bus because, you yeah. know, I can't get up as early, which kind of, like, drives me crazy. But I've also <laughs> been – the other night, the guys were like, hey, buddy, maybe maybe stay up a little later tonight because we had a long drive. It's, like, the only long drive of the whole tour. Got it. And <clears throat> we didn't get there until 2 p.m. And they were like, why don't we, why don't we stay up? You know, a little later tonight or you're going to be. And so I took a Benadryl and I was able to just like, I was like, all right, there's yeah. nothing else to do. I get really motion sickness. Uh, so, yeah. What's Morgan Wade studying in college? 
I was, I was about to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've never heard you talk about that so before. So I was going to be a physician's assistant. Like okay. That was like, you know, cardiothoracics. So, and, uh, and you could have been in the field then. So that's why you like fitness so much. All yeah. Right. And so, but I ended up, uh, I got a bachelor's in health sciences. Okay. So that's, uh, you know. So during this time, were you like making music and pursuing that at at the same time? I didn't start. So my freshman was my freshman year and, you know, I was like, really? All right, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to do all this stuff. And then I got in there and then I, you know, always like secretly played music, like wrote songs, like did all this stuff. It was never always play guitar. Yeah. I I, I started playing. I was like 12. Okay, cool. And, um. Yeah, then freshman year, and then I started drinking, you know, living at the, the dorms down there and hanging out with my friends, so I started drinking, so then I bust out my guitar, uh, and that's where I, that kind of started, and then everyone You liquored like, up, and you feel yeah. a little right. bit more, Right, everybody but, yeah. was like, wow, you know, you're really good, and uh, then I got on Craigslist, because that's... You got on Craigslist <laughs> to yeah. find... Man, okay, I'm yeah, I'll wait for the what's next. <laughs> I remember oh, well. The hell is like, <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. What's going what's on here? Yeah. Why okay. am I not on Craigslist? But see, I always remember getting on Craigslist. Like that was just like a thing where I was at. I remember I was like 13 and sold a futon on Craigslist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. Like I would get on there and just sell stuff. No one ever said anything. I'd, be like, I'd ask my grandpa. I was like, "Can you drive me up to the courthouse?" And he'd be like, "Yeah." I remember I just go up there. I make the trade off and get my money. I was like, all right, Slanging. just finding stuff around the house. I was like, I'm gonna barter. I'm gonna sell this shit. I heard grinding. So I don't know why, but that was like a thing. I get on Craigslist all the time, just be on there scrolling and trying to find stuff. Were you Not, trying to find venues to play at, or just no? Sell stuff? So you were I, hustling. I yeah. found a band. That's oh, what they were looking okay. for a band. So got it. I got two of my friends from from college that were you know like. One of them was shorter than me, okay. like for protection, I guess, and rolled over to like the sketchy part of Roanoke, okay. and uh, pull up this guy. It's dark outside. He's got sunglasses and a beanie on. He's smoking weed. Just hey, man, walk right on in that house. That's down, how you find your first band. Down in the basement, <laughs> just went on down in there, and it turns out like everybody down there was really cool. One of them yeah. was like a college professor, and it yeah. was like. Oh. And uh, ended up having a band with them, and it kind of, like, went from there, and I would just take any show I could get. Yeah. And uh, that's when I was like, I don't So wanna... what year was this? Like, were you, like, a sophomore in college? Yeah, so this was, like, 2014. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And so I was just, like, playing, like, the weekend warrior stuff, and I remember I was, like, that was first semester. And I was like, I don't want to be in college anymore. And then, of course, my mom and them were – I understand because they were like, I was like, hey, I have a show. And she's like, what do you mean you have a show? <laughs> like, I had never, she's like, what are you, you seeing? Like, it was like, like this whole, know. no, no. Because I was like, I was a very, like, private kid. <laughs> it was like, and uh, so they were like, what, what are you talking about <laughs> kind of thing? Like, you need to stay in college. Like, yeah. And so I ended up, I did finish and I got the bachelor's. Um, but that was, like, kind of the thing with the job that I had at the gym. Like, they'd let me do my homework and stuff. So, I'd get up early, and I'd, like, knock all that stuff out. And, uh, yeah, but. It's wild. Probably wild to think back, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just remember, I'm like, how the hell did I do that? Because, you know, now I don't, obviously, don't get paid by the hour. It's, like, you know, by yeah. shows, and I go and do that. And I just remember, you know. Now it's like I got the G wagon and stuff like that, but I was, you know, I worked for a really long time yeah. to like get there. That's so why I don't have, I don't have like, you know, my little sisters and stuff like that. I'm like, no, you guys gonna have to like go work. Yeah. Because I spent five years making. I think by the time I was done there, I maybe made like a twenty five or something. Yep. I remember I had a no car. I never had a car with AC until <laughs> I got that first Mercedes. And so I was like, that's the first car I ever had with AC. Like, so I was good. just real frugal, like, didn't, you know. So I, I look back and, yeah, it's it's nice. Well, because, you, you know, especially now with recent success, people are like, overnight came out of nowhere. Nah. Yeah. Ain't no one coming out of nowhere. Yeah, and they, they you know, I'll have something. <laughs> They're going to say that say. about our podcast when right. it's number one, too. You <laughs> know, but we've been in here grinding. That's right. right. Yeah. Well, that people will be like, oh, you know, you just – you change you they'll they'll talk about the shoes and stuff like yeah. that i'm like man like i would have bought this stuff years ago if i could have I, like, I couldn't do that and like yeah. i'm you know i was like i work really hard and you know we're not 
I'm not home like ever. I was like, so if I'm gonna go shop and buy some stuff that I want to enjoy, hell yeah, then I'm gonna go do it. I'm about to wear my Gucci shoes tonight. See. That's yeah, <laughs> I, I was yeah. Right, I might break out the J's. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, you know. All right, cool, you buddy. Yeah, so let's go. I, yeah, so let's go on the shoe route, and you know, <laughs> obviously you're yatted up. So like, where like where does like that swagger? <laughs> oh, no, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we call yatted. Yeah, Dad, you're yatted up. Know. It's very. I'm, I'm very inspired by it. So I want to know like where does that like charisma, confidence, and like swagger come from? Because you got like the colorful J's, yep. yatted up, like you looking fresh. So like, where does that come from? <laughs> this is gonna be unlike any podcast you ever do. <laughs> <laughs> no, so like. My mom and my dad will give me, like, a hard time about it because I remember when my dad got a tattoo. I was probably, like, 13. I remember leaving, like, little Bible verses on his nightstand about tattoos because I grew up in this Baptist church. Okay. It was, like, super religious at that point, and I was like, tattoos are really bad. Dad, you shouldn't have done that. And it was like anti. I was probably the You've most. You've really come a long way. Yeah, yeah, it's hilarious. Now I'm sitting here knuckle tattoos and throat tattoos. A couple on my face. So it's like, all right. But, yeah, I think it was just like I had that mentality. And then I went to college. And I don't know. I had one of my friends was sitting there. She was like, you'd look cool with a tattoo. And I was like. Shane Roll. Yeah. I would look cool with a tattoo. <laughs> yeah, we got in the car and literally drove. I think I had like. Ninety dollars in my bank account, and I just went and I was like, "What can I get that my mom won't be like?" And I, I got my siblings' initials right here. Oh, that's cool. I think like two weeks later, I went and got like three more, <laughs> and I got like this cactus right here because my mom was like, "No more tattoos. Like, don't you know you're you're wanting to be a doctor? Like, you can't." I was like, "All right." So I went home and I was like changing, and my sister Lily, the oldest, she she was like three, and she was like. What's that? What, what? What's that? And I was like, shh. Like, let's just, just don't <laughs> say nothing. We're sitting at dinner one night, and she goes, I love cactuses. You know, the green prickly things. And I'm like, just staring at her. And mom's like, okay. You know, we're just sitting. She goes, um, I think it's called an attitude. Morgan has one on her arm. And that's what she was calling these tattoos. My mom's like, let me see it. Let me see it. <sighs> and so it was like after that, I was like, you... You little shit. I'm like, <laughs> payback's going to be rough one day because yeah, yeah. now we're at that age. They're like, I think I'm going to get a couple tattoos. I think the youngest will be covered because she's like so many me. But So with the tattoos, like, is there, is each one like a, P, does each one mean something or is it just, I have a taco like on my arm. You think each one means something? <laughs> yeah, <they're> like, <laughs> I was wondering. I was wondering. Yeah, no, I got too many tattoos now for it to mean something, but I, I like, I don't know. Yeah, I like hard. doing it and. Because I'm trying to get super gadded. So what was your strategy? Do you fill up your sleeve first and then work the way up or, like, what? I Yeah, I kind of, like, started Net right tight. here and then yeah. I just, like, just now here we are. And I don't have much canvas left on my <laughs> arms. I got some on my leg. Like, I got a roll of toilet paper that says 2020 on my leg. And my mom was like, what? You really <laughs> but I respect that, though. <laughs> like, that's... Hey, John Walker's the same way. Yeah, He's like, got, like, good. a pig smoking a cigar on his leg. Well, that's all like, Anthony yeah. Oliveira is, Yeah, yeah it's true. Like that, you know? I'm like, if it makes me laugh, I'm going to do it. Like, I don't care. But, yeah, that's I just... That's amazing. I think, too, like, the thing about my hands was... I was like, all right, I, I'm i going to get my hands tattooed. And, and one of the reasonings behind that was, like... Yeah, they call them job stoppers. Yep. I was like, I'm never going to work for anybody else. I was like, no matter if I'm not doing music, I'm not doing anything. You're like, saying I'm that when work. you do that. And so, like, I went and got those, and I remember one of my friends was like, you better hope this music thing pans out. I was like, even if it doesn't, I'm not going to work for anybody else. Like, yep. I'm always going to, like, do my own thing. So, I was like, I don't give a shit. Like, I, I want to get that. it. That's yeah. like burning the ships in a way. Yeah. Because I was like, all yeah. right. Yeah, but it was funny because at that time, though, I was working this tax reassessment job. Okay. I took that because I could work Monday, <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, oh and half a day on Thursday full time and make money and then spend, you know, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday yeah, night, playing. sometimes Sunday playing shows where I wasn't making anything. Makes sense. And so I was able to, like, stay afloat and do that. But I remember when the boss came, I put little Band-Aids on like every <laughs> finger so they wouldn't but then like the winter time if i had a meeting i just had these little gloves on you know but That's i'd roll up to these people's houses i didn't of course i didn't have the throat tattoos or anything yet but <laughs> yeah. i still had them all over my arms and people were like hey yeah. and you know i'm just like ah, i'm here to you know you kind of like that in a way to think are people really going to treat me different 
Yeah. Like, do you, you know what I mean? Because that's what, one thing Anthony Oliveira, shout out to our homie Anthony, he said when he tells people he was a former addict, remember? He says he can see it in their eyes. And they already judge because he's tatted up too. Yeah, yeah. But like when he was on our show, he said that and everybody knocked him up like because he had been clean for so many years. He's like, you can tell right when I say that how people or when I walk up because he's got head tat the whole nine. Yeah, so I think yeah. that's you probably still are experiencing that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like and I think, too, like, you know, Kyle. I've got her in the oh Kyle Richards. Oh yeah, you know, corrupted her into getting a few tattoos. She's got like five tattoos. She's got like five oh, tattoos really? she's, now. She was hanging out with Morgan. She's she added up. Life. She's yes. like, yeah, like, nice, yeah nice. but I remember we were getting in a, a car and the the Uber, I was the first one to get in there and like the driver picking us up was like real skeptical of me like kind of asking and it, You're it, it, it pissed hostage. her off and then like later she was like I didn't know I was like yeah I was like I get I had a lady uh, I went in the grocery store. It was like a Friday, I went there and got me some cookies from the deli for like three bucks. I went and rang them up, did my thing. I'm not getting a receipt for that. I'm not bringing that shit back. <laughs> Followed me out to my car thinking I stole. I was like, I'm getting a G-Wagon. You're going to think that I stole $3 <laughs> cookies <laughs> out here. I'm like. That's crazy. But it is. <clears throat> yeah, they they have a different uh, perception. I like the the bridge burner, though, in a way. Yeah. Like I, yeah, I agree with that. And it's funny because. I never wanted them anywhere but my forearms, mm -hmm. which would be the same way. You can't wear like a collared shirt to work like because I knew I was never going to do that either. Yeah. And it was like that was uh, it, it's interesting that you thought that same way. I like right. that. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. But Try on. Or go ahead, cool. But do yeah. you think like, uh, you know, because obviously like your look, even the sound of the music in the country music space is so different. Yeah. yeah. So I imagine like your fans, they see you all you ended up being like your true authentic self. I, that probably makes them like want to like love you even more and like listen to your music and like really like buy into that. Yeah. So yeah. Can you, can you talk about the transition though, going from like being doing like the tax assessment to <laughs> burning the boats and say going fucking going all in? Yeah. Like how are you like feeling and how did you process So I, I started, that's when I was out in Nashville. Um, <coughs> I, I started going out there and my now producer, uh, Sadler, I was starting to write with him and you know, we were kind of recording some demos and stuff and he's like, you've either got to, he was like, either if you really want to do this, you can't be doing the other job. He's like, you got to, like, go all in. And I had been thinking about it. I was like, all right. And then I was working that job one day, and people, I mean, people hated you. I mean, obviously, I don't really blame them. You're coming around there, snooping around their property so their taxes will go up, you know. All tax assessment. Yeah, yeah. yeah they so just like did that I shit would, to me. I would, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah I just got so that bill. I would, like, roll up, and then, I mean, I'd have the cops called on me. It was, like, stuff all the time, but... They let their pit bull out. These people did. It was, like, sketchy. I got in my car. I was like, this is it. I'm done. I'm not doing this shit anymore. I hate it. Last draw. And uh, yeah. I quit. And um, so, yeah, it was obviously, like, different. But, like, for a while, it took me a minute. I would like, I was scared, obviously, because mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, what am I going to do? But I'd, like, saved up my money. And uh, then I went and recorded Reckless. And it went through all that. And then COVID hit. Hmm. And so is COVID uh, good or bad for you? I actually did really good yeah. because like the streaming went up. People were at home. Yep. And so I started doing those lives mm -hmm. and uh, I, you know, doing these podcasts and like yeah. all this stuff. And so I was doing, I mean, I go do those little live things and people would Venmo me money. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm doing better now doing this. Cause I was like opening these shows and like traveling around. I wasn't making shit doing that and then i came out of covid and reckless we put reckless out well i say came out of covid we're still i guess in but yeah. you know what i mean yeah. out of the quarantine stuff and so then reckless came out and it just it took off from there so i went from you know pre-pandemic to like trying to make ends meet and you know like barely getting by to coming out of that and being able to go get on all these tours and then so yeah. sick. how old were you at this like at this point how old are you now I'm 28 now. Okay. Um, so like 25. Yeah, yeah, 25, 26, something like that. I can't. Awesome. Math's hard. That's why I'm doing <laughs> yeah. music. Hey, that's, the, that's why the bank account yeah, just right. counts it for you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Trayvon. <laughs> um, so I'm curious, like, during your musical career, like, when was the time? Because, like, obviously you were scared when you made that jump and everything, but when was the time where you were, like, like, was there a certain moment that happened that you were, like, okay, like, I'm going to actually do this. Like, this is kind of solidified that this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I mean, 
I kind of had been getting that from like other people, and I just knew I was like unhappy mm-hmm. doing that job. Also, I sucked at that job. <laughs> I sucked at I it. I wish my guy sucked at it that just gave me that bill I got. <laughs> well, I mean, it would, it would, like, suck. I, you would go to, like, some of these areas, like, and they they would be, they would, like, have just, like, a little building out there. I remember this one lady, this older lady, she was just like, yeah, I just got this little shed back there that she just, like, put in. And I was like, I'm not writing that down. Yeah. Like, because then it just, they charge you for that. I'm like. Yeah. You know, it was just stuff like that. So it was like hard to see. I was like, "There's this is not right. I think it's dirty. And, you know, everybody hated me. But then I'd have like some old men be like, you want to come inside? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. nah, man, I'm I'm good. You know, that, that kind of. <laughs> I did have one little old lady that was like, you come have some cookies with me. And I was like, this seems, I mean, she could have, like, locked the door, but she was look innocent, and I yeah. sat down and had some lemonade and cookies <laughs> with her, but I just knew, like, I wasn't, I wasn't happy, yeah, and so yeah. then once I did quit, and I realized, okay, I've got time to focus on the stuff I want to do, and, you know, I'm not getting yelled at mm. every day, that yeah. was kind of, that was kind of nice, but it, it was like the world was, you know, all the signs were pointing towards you know, yeah. it's freeing job. too, because you're like, I'm spending all this time doing some shit like that sucks. And I don't like, which yeah. was my whole concept of like watching my family do all those blue collar jobs. And I'm like, they're spending so much time because all of them worked yeah. 60, 70, 80 hours. And I'm like, if we were using that time to do something we like, right. how could it not be successful? Yeah. Everyone I grew up with knew how to work hard. Right. That's like a hard thing for some people. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, it, there's no way. And this is like, yeah, I'm not some academic all-star, but I'm thinking if I just apply that same amount of time to this what stuff, was, what, how man, does that not work? That, that side eye look that yeah. you gave. Because Danny has to edit all my stuff. Okay, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> you heard a broken English. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. Ask ACT score. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's 13. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. our, our Thanksgiving episode was amazing because the first, like, 15 minutes was about everyone's ACT, ACT scores. scores. Yeah. We were all hammered, too. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Yeah, that was amazing. Oh. Tell me about um, every, I think, artist has this first time they hear themselves on the radio, right? Or Sirius Radio or whatever it would be. Like, what was the first time where you were driving or in in, in somewhere and you hear yourself? Because I'm going to tell you, I, you know, hung out with you last time you were in Columbus. And then I went to somewhere uh, down south. Like, I drove somewhere, I forget, for a vacation or whatever. And I was in Tennessee buying, you know, water in the gas station and you were on yeah. and I, it was a uh, last cigarette. So obviously I know the words. That's like your, it was your main song at the time, or it maybe still is. And I'm like, I start singing the words and I'm like, Oh shit. And I'm in, so, and I'm like, this is Morgan. And I'm like, this is fucking awesome. You know what I mean? Cause I'm like, obviously a huge fan and cheering for you. But like, what, what, what was that? For You're not you? going to believe it. Please. You're not going to believe it. It's great. So I had a bladder infection. I was okay. at the doctor pissing in a cup. Shut up. Dead serious. I heard, it, I heard it on the radio and I was like, up. No. That's gonna stick with you. <laughs> yeah. I remember I was just like, Are you are you kidding me right this now? This is my moment. This is my moment. But my like my siblings were so over it. My brother, because when I was on like the it was on the countdown every Saturday, mm. my mom would go make all the kids get in the van and they would sit there and listen to see what number I was at. So the two oldest ones were like cool with it. But my brother was like in every photo just, and he was like, you know, some people actually like to listen to Morgan's music. And I was like, damn, I was like, all right, I appreciate the honesty, but I mean, he, he hated it. So when it hit number one, he was so happy because then, you know, it, they take it off. They can just wait yeah. till he's at number one. <laughs> it's just like, Ugh. That's funny. They would get everybody and sit in the van. Well, my mom would walk around with a little, like, J-clip thing. She'd be like, I'm going to. She's like, I need your phone. I was like, why? She's like, because when your song comes on, I want to film you watching. I was like, I don't I don't want to do this. Like, it was great because she was, like, really proud. Yeah, but, like, that's awesome. They were all, like, my grandpa, he, uh, a lot of my family's in, like, the timber business, mm-hmm. like, doing lumber and all that. And he had a tree fall on him years ago so he's mm. like deaf on one side and uh he so he can't hear real well but he'll come to like my shows and he had my grandma write down all my lyrics for him so he could memorize them so he could like try that's to like sing sick. Them. yeah 
So. Yeah, that's a tough business. I had a family member pass away from that yeah. when they undid a log truck. And it's actually wild. A guy had done timber for 30 years. Uh, he actually owned a pallet company. So they would take the timber and make pallets out of it. His last run, when he took the strap off, one of the logs mm. got him. 30 years of unstrapping them logs. Yeah. It, was, it was it was unbelievable. Man, it's it's like I don't think you you know you don't think about it yeah. like how tough that is. It's my tough. uh my great uncle he cut a tree down out there fell killed his son. Ooh. Like it's like it's like a total like it's it's a scary like tough business for that, sure. You know you don't I mean it's like anything else you just don't think about it. I stacked lumber uh for like six months before I got the mining job, so I was around a decent amount of it, and yeah, it's it's way way tougher than people realize right. they just think oh well the woods at home depot yeah <laughs> you know what i mean so back to you danny all right so as we mentioned in the gym you are on the way to shred town your words yeah. danny just casually walked up <laughs> he's like on your way to shred town i Norm- didn't know normal what i was gonna say <laughs> well one of the first things i asked was like are you gonna get juicy today <laughs> <What? Yeah. laughs> this is normal talk yeah. yeah normal talk so like what is your two or three uh pieces of, of advice for those who want to go to shred town oh <laughs> i think like one thing for me has been, you know, I'm like working on my push up game right, right now. Right. And I'm like, all right, form. I think that yeah. that's like such a big thing because people will go in there. I'll watch people at the gym and they're just in there like, they'll be like, yeah, I just did like 50 push ups. Like, you didn't do one. <laughs> Man, you didn't Not a push up was you know, done. <laughs> it's like stuff like that, just like being consistent and then like setting small goals to like knock those out. Mm-hmm. And honestly, you know finding like your reasons why you're wanting to do something like in the gym like it it uh like the average like female can't do a pull-up yep and that like <clears throat> really bothered me i was like i i want to be able to go that's what you were focused on last time you were so saying. i gotta tell you what i did at disneyland <laughs> okay. and this is gonna be one of my biggest flexes okay, right? okay. flex, <laughs> flex <laughs> on them flex on pull-ups <laughs> so you just see arms yeah let's go i went there with kyle and like her family and my family so yeah. she was in the gym that's not the flex though no this is not yeah. the this is this is not <laughs> no that's clear. not the flex <laughs> yeah. Kyle's just Kyle to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope she hears this. Shout out. Kyle, yeah. Kyle, Kyle you ain't We'll no, send it no. to her. Yeah, we'll, we'll flip it for her. <laughs> She's flexing on him. But I was in there in the, like, the gym there at Disneyland. It ain't shit. Yeah. You know, but I was like, all right. Yeah. I had known this because I was like, all right, this is going to be, like, just like a dumbbell. Like, mm-hmm. all right, we're going to have to, like, yeah. And so I got in there, and the guys, there's these two guys in there, and they're just like, one of those that's using absolutely every piece of equipment. Okay. And they're not doing shit. It's one and of those it's guys. so annoying. You're one of those guys? No, I, no, said, yeah. I just said, oh, one of those guys. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. And I'm watching them, and they're over there, and they could not do one pull up. And they were just standing over there taking up. So they moved. I went over there and busted out 10 perfect pull ups. <laughs> Let's go. Right and then I just got down and I walked mean away. Mug and Kyle was like, I wish I had my phone. I just, really, I just busted them out. So good. And walked away. It's so good. And I and they left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you crushed their pride. Yeah. yeah. My daughter, my daughter did gymnastics, so she's pretty good at pull ups. Yeah, and yeah. I took her to the Arnold, and there was like all different age groups at the Marine uh, thing that do pull ups at yeah. the Arnold, and she did fifteen, and oh, like I think this for AG was like really in it. I think AG only did like eight or ten. And so it was like, you know, that mess. Went oh, up. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was pretty amazing, though. But it was cool. Like, I could tell how empowered she was because she knew how, like, uncommon that is to your yeah, point. Yeah. So it was pretty sweet. I mean, it's I had a lady at the gym like, you know, I didn't you, you never know who's like watching you or whatever. And she was like, hey, like, I, you know, I wish I could do a pull up. And I was like, you you can like you got to like go in there and like work. So I think. That's like a big thing for me. It's like you can do something if, yeah, you, yeah. if you really just you know work at the it. The mini goals is a good tip too, yeah. because obviously you don't do fitness for your living, but you're pushing fitness goals the same right. as you are your music. Right, and it's like training for that hundred mile race. It's, yeah. you know, I, I said I was like on this one training plan, and it was just crazy. And I was like, all right, you you gotta like pace yourself because I'll go zero to one hundred yeah. really quick with like everything. And so I was like, all right, you gotta pace yourself, or you're gonna get hurt, and you're not gonna meet that end goal. Anyways, so. Wait, can we talk about that real quick? Good. 100 mile, that kind of is like my language right there. Yeah, yeah, So, like, wait, did you already do this or you are doing it? <clears throat> no, I'm doing it in November. So, okay. I was telling Corey earlier. So, I have a, 
my mom underwent uh, like a, a double mastectomy and had her ovaries and all that removed because breast cancer runs in her family. So I got tested for the gene, mm. which is something everybody should probably do. It's 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 easy. You order uh, this little test and you basically spit in this tube. Mm -hmm. You mail it back to the genetics person and they get back to you and they can tell you like you know like you it's like stuff, 80 yeah. bucks mm -hmm. and you can and so of course mine came back that i have the gene so in november i'm gonna just get a double mastectomy it'll take all my chances away you know to get breast cancer my aunt was 30 when she had it oh, wow. and so you know obviously i don't want to do that but uh you know it's better than than getting that's, cancer that's so, real Hell yeah. uh, <clears throat> i'm gonna have you know November, the end of November, and probably some of December before I can. I have to take like four weeks mm. off okay. of doing anything that's going to use my chest. And so I was like, I want to do something big right before I have to be kind of like not really shut down. Really. Yeah, which I'm, you know, like I'm trying not to think because I don't like to sit still. So I was like, yeah. I'm gonna. I've wanted to do a hundred miler, and um, so I was like, I've done two fifties. I've done a fifty k. Or three fifty Ks and then, you know, a six hour race, three hour race. She's yeah. about it, dude. Yeah, I love it. You yeah. get into some uncharted territory when you get into a hundred. It's like a mental thing. Mm -hmm. But I would rather go run, you know, twenty miles than I would go run a five K. Because mm -hmm. I feel like people just go, it's just it's like the assholes that, you know, <laughs> the turkey trot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like and they'll just like go out and just like, you know, I'd rather do that long, slow, steady, mm -hmm. yeah. then I would just go gas myself. I don't know. I'm excited to see how you do when you go to see Cameron because he does yeah. like all those. Like he does like a marathon through the woods and they shoot, lift. I mean, it's like pretty fucking well, sad. The Moab yeah. 240 and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a fucking yeah, beast. It's that's, awesome. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, I always say that I think one of the ultimate cheat codes is being jacked and creative. So I'm very, Facts, uh, so I'm very, cause, <laughs> because me personally, like at, right after I get done, you know, pumping arms, like it seems like colors are like popping out to me. Stuff, yeah. Stuff looks Talk different. your game. Music's Cole. hitting me. And I find myself making like the best graphics and like art, like stuff like That's that. That's why he's the graphic after, gangster. After I'm, after I've hit arms or whatever. So I'm very curious, like, <laughs> Not what, like, it, is that something for you? Like, when do you feel like the most creative and generally like, what comes first? Like, do you play the guitar first and then write the lyrics, or how does that, like, go down? Yeah, yeah that's – so I'm obviously in the mornings is, like, more of my creative time. Yeah. Um, but I'm not, like, one of those people that's, like, all right, I'm just going to go sit down and make myself write. I could do that, but I'm more of a – I write in my head, so I'll just kind of come up with something in my head. Um, and, like, when I'm on the plane, I'll, like – the uh, my publishing company will send me, like, tracks mm. so i can like write to tracks and like do stuff like that so um it, it just kind of for me it just like comes to me or it doesn't i'm not you know comes in waves yeah. don't it yeah and so you'll go through periods of time where it's like shit i'm not coming up with anything and i'll be like and then i'll write like four songs like yeah. i wasn't i didn't know about this record we just finished up recording record number two and i was like man i before we went in the studio, I was like, I don't know. And then the night before I went in, I wrote two two new songs, and we ended up cutting those the Damn. very next day. So for me, it just, like, it comes. So whenever you're going through, like, these creative droughts, because I do the same thing, I always try to transition and go, like, focus on something else. So, like, for, for you, is that something where you go, like, listen to some sort of different type of music? You look towards other sources of inspiration, or, like, what is that for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I obviously, like, I'm big into, you know, listening to different kind of music, but I'll, I'll like, go just listen to, like, an audio book or, like, completely remove myself from, like, trying to compare myself to anybody else and, like, what they're doing and not not worry about it too much. And, and then it always just, like, comes back. But, I mean, I can write something every day, but it might be shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I would rather just... Some people wake up and they go and they're like, I have my writing room and I do all this and I, I can't, I can't hang with that. Like that's too confined, but I'll go out and like walk and I'll just come up with stuff in my head, but I'll see something and I'll like make a little note in my phone. So I have, you know, all these like one liners and stuff like that in there, but 
that's the same thing I do for daily fires. Yeah. After I'm done lunging or doing conditioning or lifting, I'll just have like a couple ideas and I'll just throw them on my notes yeah. section. And I realize if I don't put them on immediately, I definitely forget them. Yeah. So I'm really bullish about making sure I'll just, even if it, it doesn't make sense when I'm writing it down, I can come back to it and make sense of it. Then I can just sit in the chair and rip off like a bunch of them in a row. It's kind of a similar right. thing. Mm -hmm. My, my yeah. name went platinum yet though. I'm trying to, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get it there though. So who are like some of your other favorite artists? Yeah. So, uh, it, it, it fluctuates here mm -hmm. by, like, what's out. Um, I love Lana Del Rey because I'm a big, like, Dude, I've been jamming worst, the summertime sadness like, lately. That's a great song. <laughs> Your eyes it. when you said that. They got, Dude, real, big. They got real big. Yeah. Dude, for some reason, it hits me. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Uh, I never I heard like before. It. Man, I, I uh, actually saw her in um, L.A., like, maybe six months ago. We were on the elevator together, and I'm just like, Man, I love her. I started listening. That was kind of like, I was, you know, I don't want to be one of those people. Where I'm like, I was listening to her before everybody else was listening to her. <laughs> so you're going through that right now, yeah. where people are like, I knew Morgan way back, right? You know, right. Like, <laughs> so, like I just, I was like standing there next to her. I didn't say shit because, like, I could tell she was like incognito. Yeah. But I was like right there, and I, uh, you know, I'm not one of. The, I won't ever like just walk up and be like, Hey, can I get a? I don't know. I'm like weird. Uh, about that shit, I'm just trying to pretend like yeah. I don't care, but I did really care. <laughs> <laughs> I well, appreciate the honesty. Yeah. 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 Well, it's funny yeah. because after that, so this was at like a festival, okay. and so she was like kind of in the backstage area, and she wasn't playing or anything. She was just like there. My guitar player was like she was sitting over there, and so he was like he really wanted to be like make it like. Away, kind of thing. <laughs> so he like pretended he was on the phone and like walked by and was like, oh yeah, yeah. And he like stood down at the end because he's like, I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to. And then he came back with his tail between his legs. He's like, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> so he just stood down there and had a fake conversation on the phone for like five minutes. <laughs> That's just amazing. like rambling on. Um, yeah, but I'm gonna have to check out yeah. who this is because I I have no uh, no you content. I just I yeah. like her because like yeah. her stuff's different and it's like. Her lyrics are, you know, they're out there. She just says, like, whatever. So I, like, appreciate that. And I'm kind of the same with Miley Cyrus. Like, she does her own thing. Yeah. And she can sing, like, any genre. Yeah, she, she can. can. go, you know, do a country song, but then she can go do Metallica. And I'm like, this is dope. You She's know? pretty and, badass. Yeah. yeah. So I, I really like her. And then I'm really into NF, mm. the rapper, and he's got some new shit coming out. But, like, Jack Harlow. I fuck with Jack. Harlow. I was yeah. hoping I ran into him, would run into him. Like, I asked one of the my driver yesterday, and she was like, "He's walking around here all the time." She's like, "I'm honestly surprised you didn't run into him." Huh? So yeah, we saw him at the um, college game day, Michigan yeah. Ohio yeah. State. He performed. It's pretty sick. Yeah, everybody says he's like super nice dude. Yeah, too. He looked but like the way he was. Operating if he saw me well. yesterday, he probably wasn't gonna stop because I look like I had a like a <laughs> bulletproof vest on because I'm just like walking oh, around. You're rocking. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm going to go to Starbucks, and I'm like, I'm just going to throw this vest on, and I'm going to go all the way down there. And this girl, I go in Starbucks, of course, they're just kind of looking at me. I'm like, whatever. And <laughs> that's I like, hilarious. I sat down outside, and this girl's like, I love your style. This is very unique. You know? <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, but – Honestly, I think that was the, the least of anybody's concerns. Like, yeah. I was like, yeah. There was a lot of stuff going on out there, and they were probably – but the guys in my band were like, why are you wearing a bulletproof That's vest? So I was good. like, it's not. It's, it's a weighted vest. And they're like, oh. You're like just ripping <laughs> off what 50 Cent used to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm just like out there, but That's I don't so know. That's so funny. So out of those, if you could choose one to perform with and write a song with, which one? If you had to narrow it down. Miley Cyrus, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. She's a beast. I've got to really appreciate kind of like her because, I mean, she was all over the place for a while. Yeah. But she can do it all, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, I like read, you know, one of her interviews talking about, she was like, you know, yes. She was like, but kids go through all these changes True. and they have that. She was like, but mine was just watched by the world. Facts. You know, yeah. same with like Justin Bieber and stuff like yeah. that. Like, they were growing up with the camera on them. Mm -hmm. And so... I remember when Patrick was dating her. I was in L.A. a couple times, and he was like, uh, Arnold's son was like all over the, like the, the tabloids. He said he was flying back, you know, and somebody was reading it beside him but didn't realize it was him. <laughs> and so he said, this lady is like, 
all in this section. It's just him and Miley. And he said he was like looking over and she like didn't realize, but he said that people were so interested in her. I mean, in him too. But the reality is like, she just draws people in because yeah. of yeah. them being able to see those swings. And she was so public and she's just so successful and yeah. she's very, she's herself. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, low key. Show. She's like one of my first crushes. Like I'm a Disney channel kid. So watching yeah, Hannah Montana, Montana. <laughs> like that was like my stuff, you know, I'm there like, it third is. Grade, like, oh man, You're like this girl's got, eyes. yeah. Like I'm like, where's this at here? You know, <laughs> this ain't in Bellsville. Kid. <laughs> yeah, this ain't in Bellsville. <laughs> I ain't see this in my school. Uh-uh. Back to hey, you, Trey. You look like yeah. a Jonas brother. Hey. Uh, not, I was more of like a sweet life of Zach and Cody guy. Yeah. Uh, fun fact. I think uh, Kyle, content Kyle's only concert he's been to in his life. Jonas <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Kyle. <laughs> Shout out Kyle. He told me that yesterday because he's excited to go yeah. see Morgan. Oh, he's yeah. like, I've only been to one concert, G. I'm like, which one? He's like, Jonas Brothers. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like, <laughs> Things you don't tell Corey. Yeah, yeah. This was like a year ago. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right, back to you, Trey. <laughs> so um, funny. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm curious, like how like you found, like how you were able to like find like your sound and like your niche, like on like the t- on like just like the genre like of music like that you made because like obviously like you make like country music and everything, but there's just so many genres within like subgenres within every genre of music too. Yeah. So like, how did you come up with like this is going to be the sound that I wanted to make and everything? Yeah, so, like, when we went in to make Reckless, you know, Sadler, he, uh, my producer, he, he's not, like, a country guy. So, he tours with a band, Jason Isbell, in the 400 unit. And, honestly, they're more of a rock band, if anything. But Sadler's a big Tom Petty dude. Mm. And he loves, like, rock music. Awesome. And so, basically, he just came in and was like, let's just, every song, like, let's give it its own sound. Like what it what it needs, we're gonna throw this on there. So that's why like every song's kind of like different. And the only thing people say that's like real country about me is my accent. Because yeah. when it comes down to like the music, it's not, you know, like old school country or anything like that. No. So radio kind of was like they don't know what to do with me. You, you know? can yeah. tell they're confused because you're really, I mean, all, like go across all genres. I yeah, think exactly. Yeah. And Rock, like this country. this next record, like. I don't know, there's, like, one song on there it's, like, super heavy, like, kind of, I don't know, Nirvana-ish Hell yeah. rock. And then, you know, we've got some that's just, like, <clears throat> piano on there that's, like, totally different. And then, you know, some kind of, like, like beachy stuff. Like, it's yeah. all, like, that's over cool. the board. And, uh, it, yeah. So, I, I mean, I feel like that's kind of how Reckless was. You kind of had, like, all the different songs and... It's almost like country kind of grabbed a hold of you first, maybe yeah. mostly because your accent. But yeah. the first time I, when I heard you live, the last time we were here, I was like, I told my wife, I'm like, uh, <laughs> she's like more like a straight rock star. This is not just a country yeah. situation. Yeah, this I, is where you're start. You're starting in country. Right. And, <laughs> and the cool thing about like getting with Sony and being with the label is like people like to make the comment of, uh, you know, they are changing her. Don't let them change you. It's like, first of all, who's them? Or, I mean, there's a lot. I got <laughs> they. a day. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, who are you talking about? But they don't make me do anything I don't want to do. Yeah. And Randy, the, the label head, this is how he, like, got me. Uh, Reckless came out. I was on an indie label. So I, like, owned everything. Yeah. And... <laughs> Reckless has been out like a month, and then I had all the major labels coming and wanting wanting meetings. What's and that feel like? It was good, but like at the time, I didn't, you know, I was like, this is obviously great. That's a good problem to have, but I was just pissed that I had to get on these stupid Zooms <laughs> and anything. I was like, this shit's like, yeah. it's not fun. It's like the same thing. It's like speed dating. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it's like speed, <laughs> speed dating really, labels. It really was. And so. The first meeting that I had with Sony, I did it. It was like the most monotone, boring meeting, like Skype. And I, I got off that, and I, my manager was like, "What the hell?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm not getting on another meeting with them." So at the same, the label head wasn't knowing that one, mm-hmm. and at the same exact time, he was at the beach and he was going with his family, and his son was like, "Hey." I want you to listen to this girl. Like, you really need to listen to this this new record that's out. And he's like, okay, I'll listen to it. Well, he got down to the beach, and his daughter 
had come down and she was like, hey, dad, I want you to listen to this record <laughs> of this girl. Awesome. And so he's like, okay, well, that's two people. So the whole ride back, he said he listened to the first song like six times wow. on there. And his wife was like, let's listen to another one. And so he got back. He's like, we need to have a meeting with this girl. And they're like, oh, we already did. He was like, we'll get her on another meeting. Like, I want to talk to her. And it was like pulling teeth to make me get back on that meeting. <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't want to get, I don't want to talk. Yeah. And so I got on there and I just remember, I was like, well, what can you do for me that this other label can? I was like, cause I own all my stuff right now. Yeah. And he was like, well, what do you mean? I was like, they're accessible. I was like, David Macias, which is the head of 30 Tigers, great guy. Hmm. Still talk to him. And I said, well, I can call David Macias at 6 a.m. And he picks up and he goes, fuck that. Call me at 5 a.m. And I was like. <laughs> okay. I was like, all right. All right, I like this dude. <laughs> and honestly, I kept, I made him work for it, though. Good. I knew, I knew I was going to go with him. But I didn't want him to know that. And he, we'd go out to eat, and he'd be like, you know, when you're with us, I said, if. <laughs> if he was like, well, when you sign, I said, if I sign <laughs> with you. And it was like I this whole it. thing. And finally, I told him one day, I was like, listen, whichever label buys me a French Bulldog, I'll name the dog after Now you're the talking label, Cole's language. Yeah, <laughs> And I'll sign with you. And he was like, that's all you want is a dog? And I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> like you ain't got no idea how much these dogs cost <laughs> and so finally i was like in austin texas my friend texted me and was like hey my friend someone back down on buying this dog i texted it to him i was like buy me this dog i'll sign with you and he was like okay and he sent me and then he went and sent the lady the money and That's i went and picked hilarious. the dog up in a target parking lot because i told him i was like i don't think you want me having a dog named warner do you Ooh. And so I went and picked up Sony, and then I'll never forget. Is that the dog's name? Yeah, it's Sony. And I'll That's never, amazing. never this forget. Awesome. Randy was like, <laughs> "Fucking kidding!" Me. I didn't so know good. how much those dogs cost. He was like, "No wonder you went." I was like, "Yeah, man, those little Frenchies are expensive." That's but hilarious. That's so how true. I like leveraged that deal, and I still hadn't <clears> signed yet. So he was like, "You, you are gonna <laughs> sign, right?" And I was like. Patience, Randy. <laughs> yeah, I like how you slow played it, though. You knew it was good. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, you were getting the feedback. You knew it was Well, I was like, what do you want to change? I was like, yeah. what do you, and he was like, what do you mean change? He's like, I don't want to change anything. So this never happens, but the label, like, took a record that was already done they and released and just re-released it that. with a, three additional tracks on it. Well, yeah, because when you go to, on iTunes, you could see that that's exactly what they did. Yeah. But they didn't change anything. They didn't change anything and like that. And they let me keep 30 Tigers as my distributor. That's cool. So they're like still working with them. And, that's cool. And so people don't get that. I think that it's a big misconception that they dictate everything you do and, and they, you know, people will be like, they'll even choose what kind of socks you wear. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if they did that in like the 80s. Yeah, it's you know, <laughs> a long it's time It's not ago. like, you know, so <laughs> I'm happy with, with my well, choice. Well, I think they have less ability to do that now because there's more opportunities uh, to be indie and make plenty of money. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, but what I love about them is, like, they don't pressure me to make any – Randy's just, like, excited. He's like, I love everything you do. Like, he he's constantly like, hey, what, what do you got? You got anything new? Like, he just wants to hear it, and that's, cool. uh, that's you know – well, you can see the difference too, Morgan, because you signed that deal not long after you were in Columbus, or at least that they started putting the budget behind you. Yeah, you yeah. started seeing like you're then all of a sudden you're everywhere you need to be. Right. In getting a chance. That's why I said a lot of people just need a chance to be on the platform. Right. Once you're on the platform, skill sets there, the passions there, the personality, people are gonna jive with it. So it's like, you know, that I could see it one oh one, the label said, We're keeping her the same, we're putting her in a proper position. And look what's yeah. happened a year later. It's Yeah, they just had the funding and the exactly. resources, you know, to, like, put me out there. Yeah, and it was on music, and then you're on this, and you're on that. It's right. like you're on everything. Yeah, and, you know, I've got to give them credit. I mean, they're extremely – they're smart. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's they know what they're doing. And I think it was great, though, that I started with the indie label and had been working because I built up, you know, like a grassroots following. So yeah. the people that were buying my record first – Yep. Those people, they're, you know, they're always going to be my fans and they're going to always be there. And I think that was better than me just going and signing with a major label because I already had this following and this backing mm -hmm. and I can go sell out shows 
So, oh, yeah. you know, there's a lot of people starting out and they just go and get a song on the radio, <coughs> but they can't they can't sell the tickets. Yep. And to me, it's like I would rather be able to sell those mm. tickets than just have a song, you know, on the radio. Obviously, radio's great, and I want that radio play, but mm. I'm like, I can actually maintain a tour yeah. and, and, and do that kind of thing. And, and that came from just going out there and, and, and working really hard. Well, yeah, you've proved that you can maintain a tour. There's yeah. one, I think, I think they're all sold out right now. Yeah, there's like one show that's got like 20 tickets left <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> that's well, amazing. Well, like the other day I had the venue and like they were sponsoring, ran a sponsored ad and they were like, uh, a few tickets left. And I was like, I thought this stuff was sold out. My agent called them. They're like, well, we had two extra tickets. I was like, you can't be, it's sold out. Yeah, yeah. It's sold out. And of course, they sold the two extra tickets, That's but then funny. it made it look like, you know. Yeah. I was like, no, don't be doing that. Make it look like I hadn't sold that shit out. But. <laughs> That's right. So good. <laughs> I want to uh, ask, how did you end up uh, watching or seeing the content, whether it was my own max effort, the workouts? Like, how does Morgan, because look, <laughs> one day, one of the guys, you know, in Max Effort was like, yo, you see uh, the girl that tagged us today? Like, she's looking like she's got some, like, you know, style. This is country music. I'm like, check it out. I'm like, I'm like, man, this is awesome. You know, it was like early when you started, like, I think you had like five or 10,000 followers. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this, this chick is like real. Like, what's going on here? Because I don't know the genre of music yeah, yeah. at all, right? Right. So I started doing some research and I was like, this is fucking sick. Yeah. So, like, how did you even end up on her stuff? So, years ago, like, I had, you know, hanging out with people that, and they were doing, like, your lunge and learn, or mm. well, just your lunge every day, yeah. squat every day. That's ah, what it that's like, where that's start. What it, squat every day. And then I did the anabolic diet that yep. you did. Anabolic fasting? Yeah. But yep. it was, like, different back then. You might have done the original anabolic diet. Yeah. That was like the first version. I hated that shit, yeah, man. Yeah. That's why I changed it to what we do <laughs> that now. That was like really hard for me. And yeah. I remember one night I wanted something so bad. I ate a cough drop, like a sweet <laughs> cough drop. <laughs> That's so sad. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> wah, wah. I want to eat this. But like. So that was the original anabolic diet from. Well, it was like 25 grams yeah, of Mario, carbs yeah. a day. Mario Di Pasquale, yeah. Yeah, and I, <sighs> man, that was a struggle. But yeah. The I, evolution of that. So it's Yeah, like with, now it's good because, like, yeah. I can get all my veggies and stuff yep. in and, like, I'm cool with that. And then, you know, my, but I remember I could eat a, 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 a banana. Yeah, yeah, And I'd look forward to that all day because like, <laughs> I'm going to get that banana. <laughs> it's so classic. And I would just, but see, now I'm, like, more creative with my stuff. And, like, I got an air fryer so I can just, oh, like, hell yeah. you know, throw stuff in there. I'll, like, make salmon or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's good. Yeah. Then I was just like, I'd have like a little turkey patty or something. I'd be sitting there, I was like, mmm, can't, can't. Well, and like. that was the problem with that original like anabolic diet that he created was it was so restrictive and no yeah. one, no one wants to eat 20 carbs like to create. That's why I like, was an asshole. Oh, I yeah, was so yeah, grumpy. Yeah. And then my thing was, is like, I would do all that and then I'd totally just fuck it up over the weekend because I remember I'd be like, I go get a pitcher of beer and like this huge fucking calzone, <laughs> and then there I would is. go yeah. eat like six donuts. This yeah. was like my weekend routine, and I was like, "You just like this ain't working." No. Fucking <laughs> and so like I stopped doing that, and then I can't re like I was just trying to find a program or something that I could like follow and like stick with, and so I was like, "Oh yeah," and so like. I can't remember. I saw something sponsored or whatever, and so then I went and signed up for your app mm. and, like, ordered the supplements. Hell, yeah. And uh, I remember one of my friends was like, you know, if you tag them, they'll probably see it. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, that's definitely what happened. And so, like, yeah. I, I, you know, I tagged y'all or whatever, but then that's when I started, like, following the dumbbell shred, and I was, like, sticking Got to it. it. I was like, all right, this is easy to maintain on the road. And then, of course, you know, we started talking, but then when you started the I Want Abs, like, when that came around, I had just – Came off, I'd come off that tour, and I met you, yep. that same tour, and I had been doing radio stuff on top of that, and I got really sick, mm -hmm. like, to the point I was, like, hallucinating, and it was just, like, a bladder infection, and they, you know, that that's, like, one of the biggest, like, nursing home, when mm -hmm. people start getting, like, losing, losing their mind kind yep. of thing, it comes back to, like, a bladder infection, wow. which was crazy, Yeah, and so I was, like, really sick. And so I had to call off a bunch of shows and, like, rest, and I went to a urologist. 
and I was having to go twice a week and get a catheter. Mm. And basically, they'd, like, shoot these steroids and stuff up into my bladder, and I would just have to hold it for, like, three hours. Ugh. And it All was this sounds like, terrible. Yeah. Yeah, this is right TMI, but yeah, no, just, but I mean, it's, this is this could be another fl- no. I, this you just wait. I have this other <laughs> this other flex. There's more. Okay, like, I'm just sitting there, like you know, sitting there just with my little gown on, just like holding it. What? No, like just my legs spread right there, and they're in there, and they're like jabbing me, and jabbing me, and they're like, we cannot find. Obviously, they didn't say pee hole, but they're like, we, I, 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 we can't find your pee hole. And I'm like, you know, this is what you want to hear while you're just like laying there. Like, it's already just like, I was like, okay. So then the doctor, he goes, gets another doctor. And so then they're all, there's like, they're like six people. deep. There's like four people standing there. Finally, God. they find it and they're like, you have an extremely small pee hole. And I was like, so does Danny. <laughs> 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 slam dunk. Sorry. sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> but it was like the next time I came in, they had like student doctors in there. Damn. And the woman goes, "This is one I was telling you about." And I'm like, <laughs> and she was like, she was like, "I'm telling you." She was like, "I've seen people that have two pee holes, but I've never seen one this small." And she was like, "I was like, what do you say to that?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, <laughs> Cool. Yeah, like, yeah you're this like, shit hurts, and they were like, "This could be part of your problem." And yeah. I was like, "Okay." I was like, "Well," and they were like, "Oh no, there's nothing we can do." I was like, Gosh. "That's great." And well, so, you're already dealing with the dumb shit anyway. Now you got a whole host of people. I'm like, checking that's, you out. I know, and everybody. And I'm just like, I love that everybody's just standing here, just like <laughs> staring at my pee hole, and uh, <laughs> I mean, it was just that's yeah, terrible. and and then so, but they were like, "You need to go on like it's interstitial cystitis." Is okay. what it is, and they don't really know what causes it. Um, but I mean, I was in I was in such pain, I was like throwing up, mm. and it was just like days. I couldn't just get off the couch, like I couldn't. You're just so uncomfortable, yeah. like you don't know what to do. And so they were like, "You need to change your diet up." And I'm telling you, like, and that's when the I want abs was about to start, uh, and I was like, "All right, screw it, like, I'm gonna do, it. I'm now, gonna yeah. do it." And then it's been a year. Yeah. It was like a year, and I had not had any uh, symptoms doing that. So you and went so, straight like, I'm going to go anabolic fasting. I'm going to get on. Obviously, you were able to stay on dumbbell shred or start dripping yeah. in and get stacked a yeah, little bit. And, but the diet, like, completely, because I was eating, like, every night I was eating, like, spaghetti. Because I, like, look, <laughs> but it was, like, the pasta sauce. But then on it, I think a lot of the, like, you know, the starches and stuff yeah. like that. Like, I was eating a lot of sandwiches and stuff like that. I quit. Mm-hmm. And completely like change I, I didn't go like super spicy i try to stay away from like the tomato sauce and yeah, stuff yeah. and really change that up completely well the thing is about the anabolic fasting diet it doesn't have a high acidic yeah type of situation right. so first things like that and it just keeps like at the end of the day your inflammation is way lower you don't have a cr- yeah. crazy it's just right it, people just need to learn how to eat like that I, that's why i've been so bullish of teaching in all these years because it a lot of people that actually just commit. Yeah. You are forced to. Yeah. Most people are not, but, or they're yeah. finally fed up, so right. they do it. But well, and I know that is exactly mm-hmm. what that was to help because uh, a few, you know, a few months ago, I started kind of like messing around. Yeah, messing around, eating like some stuff, and I started having those symptoms. Mm. And it was like I was spent some time up in New York, and you know the Italian food up there so is good. so good. Yeah. And I was going and eating like all these meatballs that were like really fucking good yeah. <laughs> like getting this like pasta with all yeah. this tomato and, I, and then it was like immediately i was like man i can't and i would get like really bad acid reflux and like all that's connected yep. mm-hmm. and i was like all right and then as soon as i stopped that i was like back to good i was like i haven't had one in almost two years and then wow it you know i start eating like that yeah and then that sort of i happened. wondered how you got onto it that's pretty awesome you know what's so yeah. funny is the squat every day was something that uh, bridge the gap for me pretty much for my entire career because it was so different. Right. And it was like, didn't matter what you were into, powerlifting, bodybuilding, Olympic lifting, CrossFit, uh, obviously entertainment. Like people pay, like they ran into it somehow. Yeah. It, it was weird because it was just so different. And because bodybuilding.com's platform was so big at that time, mm-hmm. it was everywhere. It's just so wild because when I brought that, I pitched that idea, they were like, yeah, we've never had anybody even think about doing this before. I'm like, well, shit, let's try it. Yeah. And it was like a four day, almost like mini movie that we shot. And it, it's amazing how this many years later, it 
it's you know at least how you heard of me to right. then end up with it. that's pretty cool yeah it was funny because my cousin was like oh that's that squat guy <laughs> like, i used to do some of this but i just remember like a lot of people that i knew were doing were doing that at that's that time cool. and so it's yeah. awesome Hell yeah, back to you, Cole. Yeah, uh, so I want to go in. So we just did the Not Okay Max of your collab. Mm -hmm. Shout so, out, Cole. Yeah, so first off, I want to say thank you and, like, allowing me to basically, you know, gangster it out and just trust me with, like, that brand. But I'm very curious, like, what is the meaning behind Not Okay? Like, where did that come from? Where did that start? So I, I actually got that idea, no joke. My si We were at church, and my sister went down to, like, the little children's church thing, and she came back up. And she was just, like, covered in ink. Like, it written all over mm. stuff. She just wrote, like, not okay all over stuff. And Mom was like, why'd you do that? She was like, because I knew you were going to tell me this was not okay. I couldn't just be sitting there drawing on myself. <laughs> and so I was just, like, kind of. But then, you know, my platform's, like, so big with, like, the mental health. And I just started thinking about, like, all the things that it's, like, it's not okay. And, like, how we really need to just, like, voice that. And I was like, you know, all right. I, I kind of could take that, and so, I don't know, it just kind of, like, stuck with me, mm. and so, you know, I went and got it tattooed on my hand and, and, and did all that, but it, it was just kind of, like, that would run through my head a lot, like, it's not okay, but when it comes to, like, everything, like, not speaking out about yeah. things that we think are wrong or, like, standing up for somebody else or, like, doing these kind of things, like, that's not okay, and, like, we need to talk about that stuff. So not just a mental health thing, but about like you know like doing what's right and in mm -hmm. those kind of those kind of things. And my little sister is still like, "You took that from me." <laughs> I'm like, well, it's all good. <laughs> That's funny. Is it been cool to see the different iterations that Cole kind of came up with? Oh yeah, no, yeah. that stuff's dope, man. Yeah. So people really yeah. like it too. Only one, like, some of the people are like, those are Lakers colors. How yeah. could you do that? I'm like, all right, back the hell up, man. Yeah. Like, well, I figured, you're like, you just look fresh in it, you know? Exactly. My idea was, because you sent me the shoes and the inspiration, I just yeah. want to make sure yeah. if you rock it, you can rock with the whole fit. People are sensitive about that. Stuff. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, and Cole, talk about the inspiration. That's what you did. You asked Morgan. Obviously, you're like, hey, here's your style. Yeah, because obviously, your so, yeah, back to the original question about the drip with the shoes and the tattoos. I knew I had to somehow, like, incorporate. We got to incorporate that somehow. Yeah. So I asked, like, the easiest way to make this look dope was to get what you were already wearing because I knew you had a dope J collection because yep. you showed me. So it's like, yo, send me that, and then I'll craft it around that. So the OG, like, black, the yellow, the pink, and then. Yep. You know, you, you know, yeah. Those yeah. colors came from the shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, and then when you captured her hand tattoo on the like the the, the side hit. Yeah. That and then in within the Max Effort logo, too, it was pretty fucking yeah. sick. Yeah, because yeah. I know because you, you have the tattoo on your hand. That's the OG. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, yeah, so you got two of them. Yeah, yeah. So I crossed out the eyes. You know, because for me the mental health thing, that you know I I think of that because I lost like one of my best friends. And I thought he was good, but and honestly, like he wasn't. Never like said anything. So yeah, I was thinking about that. I yeah. lost a cousin the same way. He was always okay, it seemed, but he really right. wasn't okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's usually the guys that uh, sometimes covered up with they're overly okay, but they're actually not. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. But so that thought process. <laughs> yeah. Trayvon, back to you, buddy. Um, I don't. I don't have another question. Good? Yeah. Danny. That's uh, hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trey does a lot of soaking it in. Yeah. Yeah, you go, dude. I guess the last thing I'm interested in, well, well, it gets to the arm question later, but uh, yeah, I was, was, was going to make sure we did. <laughs> I knew they had that skip one on that yeah. one. Yeah, but uh, talk about like your 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 pregame routine, uh, like going into like the show tonight. Like, what's like an hour before look like for you? Or how are do you, you how hitting do you arms? Play? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. That actually wasn't what I was. Getting. <laughs> That's an amazing compliment. Yeah. So, like, well, the other day, where we didn't get in until 2 in the afternoon, like, immediately I went and worked out, and uh, I did some deadlifts in the parking lot out there. Hell yeah. Because one of, my friends, one of my friends texted me. She goes, were you deadlifting in the parking lot? And I was like, how the hell did you know that? She was like, some guy was on the internet talking about it. He's like, nothing like rolling up. See Morgan Wade out there for a show that. out there doing doing deadlifts in the parking lot. That's I was so like, good. where the fuck was this dude at? But, <laughs> yeah, so I did that, and then I had to like go like sound check and do all that stuff. And uh, that makes me like you even more, you know. That, then, right? well, <laughs> I, I, then I went and I walked to the hotel, and I did. I ran on the on the treadmill, showered, came back. 
uh, did my VIP thing, and then the other guys needed to go shower, so I just rode back, and then I walked on the treadmill the whole time they were in there. So that's, like, shit that I'll do, because I'm like, I don't have anything else. Last night, I took a nap, because, like, I'm trying to get adjusted to me being the headliner, so not start mm-hmm. until, like, 9. Mm. And uh, so I took a little nap from, like, 7 to, like, 8.15, 8.30. So I was like, all right, we got to – my sleep schedule is, like, the other night – I couldn't go to sleep till like two in the morning, mm. and we didn't even have a show because like now it's like, well, I had an adrenaline rush because we went to Dave and Buster's. <laughs> oh, there nice. it is. <laughs> I told the guys I was like, "There's a Dave and Buster's like right down the road." Like I love we're, it. we're, I was like, "Who's going with me?" And I'm so competitive. I love it. And so like I've got a few games that I like. It's like like go shoot basketball. Yeah, yeah. I like the ski ball. I like the little clown game. You Hell knock yeah. those things down. And I like that little quarter game. <laughs> okay. I like play that. <laughs> Everything else in there is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, and so I got it and we got there. I was like, Yeah, I'm getting the hundred dollar, like the seven hundred and fifty tickets. And the guys are just like looking at me. I was like, See ya. <laughs> and so like I sat over there playing that basketball game and like the high score was like well, I said it like one thirteen. Uh-huh. My stupid bass player. I'm gonna call him stupid. I hope he hears this. I'm making list <laughs> to it. Now nah, I love the dude. Goes over there and just smoked. Strokes. Smoked <laughs> it, and then he was just like, "Do you see that?" And I was like, "I'm fucking done. <laughs> I'm done." Yeah. That's funny. But yeah, we we stayed over there. I love some Dave and Buster's. I'm just trying to this whole tour. I'm saving up all my tickets because like <laughs> oh. I worked really hard. <laughs> I work really hard, That's and so I go good. over there, and all I can afford, like the first time I went there, was just one of those little things finger you get your things. fingers yeah. stuck in. <laughs> I was like, I worked. I got all these damn, got all these damn Spent points. Two hours, yeah. yeah. And so now there's like a big, there's like a big gorilla. My fingers are too small because my bass player got yeah, one. Yeah. Don't, it doesn't even work for me. It's like the hell. But there's a big gorilla in there. It's like twelve thousand. Tickets. So and so I'm sitting at about 4,000 tickets right now. That's so I'm like, the rest of this tour, I'm just going to yeah. go in there. Did you play sports in high school? I did. I, I So I uh, I played softball for years up until I got into high school. Mm-hmm. And then I switched over and I played uh, I played soccer okay. for a while. And um, But I, I got into just kind of – once I turned – like my junior year – I played soccer, and, you know, I finished up soccer, but, like, that senior year, I was like, hell no. I wanted to work. Yep. I wanted to, like, save that money. Yeah, I was I, I was more into that. But, you know, like, where I grew up, like, they really only cared about basketball, football, which, yeah. you know, they didn't really give a shit about any of the other sports. Uh, it's kind of yeah. a click right So, there. really, your pregame is you have to train yeah. to get you kind of – I have to do that every day. Like, <clears throat> I can't, like – some sun, like on Sundays, sometimes I'll just go like hit arms, you know. Let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> just, All right, so you're just so giving great, Danny a, yeah, a, a so clip there. Great segue. This question is brought to you by the Arms uh, Arms Army yes. and the new Max for Muscle Pre Extreme. Pre Extreme. Extreme. I was trying to get it. All right, but Danny, ask, ask a question. Yeah, ask so, a question. <laughs> I was trying to get it out of her. I was trying to, uh, yeah. Wait, so, yeah, you're about the gym life. So, what is your favorite arm exercise? Is it a bicep thing or is it a tricep or shoulders? What I is like, it? I like biceps better. But, like, Shout out. I yeah. will go, I'll pull up some of your, like, the random. Arm gauntlet of hugeness. Yeah, I'll go in there and get, like, you got this one where it's, like, 50, 50, 50, 50, and then mm-hmm. it's, like, 30s. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like one of your seven-day Oh, yeah, seven-day arm Like, I'll go in there and, like, do one of those. Shout out to seven-day arm trainer. Yeah. 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 Uh, That's free on the back of the bag. You hit that QR code, Oh, the QR code. Free Free extreme. 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 Yeah, that's pretty funny that you said that. That's good. Yeah, no, but I like going there and do that on, like, a Sunday and then, you know, get my lunges in and then my cardio. and Juicy. I like that that you like to actually, like, lift weights. Like, we did pin press max today. Nine by <laughs> yeah. nine by five back down sets, and then five sets of twenty on the curl bar presses. Like, and she was here for it, bro. Like, I love it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I like cycle like weights. I like me like there. It's been cool because like at my shows, there'll be like a lot of other females that'll come out and they like deadlift and do stuff like Hell that. Yeah. But you know, it's funny. Like, I'll roll into the gym with, like Kyle and stuff. <laughs> But she's a hey man, she's over there pumping them weights. Like yeah, yeah. she's uh but she, I mean she's also there doing like splits and shit like that. She's like whatever you call it. I don't know. <laughs> I saw her doing one of those like, like 
she's like a jellyfish, ain't got no bones or some kind of stuff. <laughs> She'd be in there like, I don't know, stretching, doing like, you know. She uh she's adapted well to the like interval stuff I've sent her. I can tell she can feel a huge difference. Oh you know, yeah, in her, but she's like, like she's one of cool. those that like she puts her mind to it. She just like goes. Yeah, she does it like no excuses kind of stuff. Yeah, so I appreciate the uh, the love there because you obviously kind of give me like that stamp of approval. Like yeah, listen to my guy. So that was well, I basically cool. told her I said hey. You're going to do this, and then you're going to talk about him. And then so that's good. basically what I did. And she did it. She's like, okay. And so she went out there, and like, but then so she good. started it, and then she she's really she enjoying it. it. And and a lot of, I mean, I've had a few of her friends, like, text me and mm -hmm. ask me stuff. And I've, like, told them about the supplements and stuff I think they should take. Yeah. And then they've, like, jumped on there. But we got several friends that are doing it. One, one of our friends, her husband and her are doing it. Nice. And he's like... He's got like two of your flags in his gym, yes. and he's uh, it, you know, he's got it. all the the max effort gear, and so that's but, so cool. Yeah, no, but it's been like great because the thing about I think that like a lot of women and stuff too will will like look at your stuff and think it's just like oh, it's just like powerlifting yeah. stuff that they don't really want to get into. But I'm like, no, they got the dumbbell shred, like yeah. all that stuff on there. Like you you can do that, you know. Like my mom's I, doing it. Yeah, like, which is awesome. I need to do a better job of highlighting that stuff because I think it is what's interesting and what's happened here, like in the building here, right? The guys and myself and uh I mean Trey pulling five fifty, weighing hundred and fifty pounds. Like people are seeing these things and going, I'm not gonna do that. Like it's almost like our our group is getting so strong that it's like getting to where it's almost entertainment. And like they right. don't feel like you know what I mean? And so I need yeah. to do a better job of like bridging the gap of like we have multiple things happening that it really can help everybody, yeah. you know. Yeah, for sure. From your mom to Trayvon, you know what I mean, to right. college athletes to whatever. So it's like or to the arms army. Shout out. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. Maybe we'll feature you one day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you definitely should. <laughs> yeah. We'll send that uh, double by. Yeah. I wanna, I got a couple random music questions. Like what's like your favorite rapper that uh either from when you were a kid or now that like kind of inspired you? Cuz I know you listen to a little bit of everything. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of go through a couple of genres. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to lie. Eminem. I yeah? think he's just like lyrical genius. He I is mean, a lyrical he, genius. He's just and 8 Mile, hey, the movie 8 Mile, <laughs> I was like, it's super inspired Man, I just got it, and, you know, and then, like, same, like, with the NF. I don't know if you've listened to any uh -uh. of his stuff. You got, you got to look him up, I but, have. like, oh, yeah. yeah, he, I mean, he came from, like, no, like real shit childhood, like, mm -hmm. all that stuff, and he's, I, I'm I'm really into people like that. Hell that yeah. have, like, come, and, you know, like, of course, like, 50 Cent, like, yep. his books were great, really like, good. loved his books, and, like, he's just such, like, a smart dude, so. Super smart. And I think, like, honestly, rappers are, like, their geniuses, like, their words, like, the stuff that they can do, like. It's very it, inspiring. It is. I mean, like, they <clears throat> literally are poets. Like, it, it's it's incredible. <clears throat> I mean, growing up, when I did, and, you know, I graduated in 1997, so right in the heat of Biggie and Pac. Right. It was unbelievable for that to be yeah. the, the premier artist at the time, right? And it became, I mean, figure they both died when they're like 25, 26 years yeah. old. So what they were able to accomplish by that point, which there's been other rappers that are, you know, that have died recently that have accomplished similar things. But it's like being like, that was like molded me so much. Yeah. Even like, I remember whenever I got married, I was thinking like, I was about to have the Pac Deer Mama be my my mom with my me and my mom's like I remember thinking that in my trailer like yeah I'm about to get up out of here and turn this thing way up it was super inspiring yeah. because he was a poet and he, right. he went to art school and did all those things it was and then watching the movies it was it was yeah the guys are geniuses so yeah, it's pretty awesome sure. what about from a rock standpoint like straight rockers like where's where's the inspiration is it yeah. Nirvana I, I love Nirvana ACDC like oh, all yeah. that oh, my guys. Uh, Clint and Ethan in the band, they have, like, the number one Metallica podcast. Okay. So have, oh, really? They have, like, a legit Metallica Oh, really? Podcast. Where they talk awesome. about Metallica? Yeah. That's, That's so cool. shit. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I wish I knew the name. Yeah, what a, shout out. Yeah, shout yeah. out. We'll shout put, out. We'll put it in the yeah, show notes. Yeah, shout yeah. out. Uh, Do we have show notes? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Metal Up podcast. All right. I think. Well, I think. That's That's cool. Damn it, that yeah. might not be it. That's hilarious. If that's not it, Just don't do go to that one. one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, from a female standpoint, was there a female rocker or somebody that you like really, or just a musician in general from when you were a kid yeah. that you really looked up to? Yeah, like, well, like, female-wise, like, uh... Like I, a Joan Jett? Yeah, 
Well, like Joan Jett, like obviously like Stevie Nicks, but oh, like yeah. as a kid, like growing yeah, yeah. up, like I was a '90s baby, so Shania Twain, like really, Peace. only oh, other yeah. country concert I've been to. Yeah. <laughs> but she so like funny. really was that was one a, that took yes. that country and she pop, it over. and she like crossed over. So you know, like Agreed. then which. I think really, you know, she so crossed me over. <laughs> when I was in high school, I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> she's <laughs> not a <laughs> twin. She was a badass. Though, was a badass. Like, <laughs> that's really where you saw it like start with like, they'll have a song on the country radio, but they'll remix yeah. it and put a pop song out. That's true. And like, you know, that bridge the gap for like Taylor Swift to go do that Carrie stuff Underwood. too. And like all them to like really go like have both worlds. Yeah. I remember uh, that's the only country concert I've ever been to purely because I was like, there's got to be hot chicks there. Like Shania Twain's hot. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I'm going to go because there's going to be, that Mission makes up. sense, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so logical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then the, the next ever country concert I've ever been to in my life, Morgan Wade. Yeah, nice. <laughs> that was 1996. I'll never forget all the way to that. <laughs> this guy came back. He's like, uh, there's like a dude here that I think is for you. And it was, was it me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's how he was like. I was wearing flex. a three quarter sleeve, you know, like yeah. Did you do oh, some yeah. push ups? Yeah, before? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, sure. Did arms? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so good. Well, Morgan, it was unbelievable having you on the show. Yeah, thanks, it was great guys. just getting ready to catch up and just having you back in the gym. Yeah, we're all excited to come watch you tonight. So, anything you want to leave for Max Effort Mafia <laughs> slash the uh, you know roundtable podcast? Any any <laughs> words of wisdom? Any parting shots? Stay juicy. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I'm your boy Corey G, Small <laughs> Arms Danny at Trace Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susek. We are out.